Hey everyone, and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a roundup of how to preserve tomatoes for the winter. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and let's get right to it. We'll cover five ways you can process tomatoes for various usages well after their season without jarring or canning or special equipment. The first way is my favorite, fermented. I won't demo the process here because I already have a video on that process, and that'll be linked in this video. In short, tomatoes sit in a salt brine for a few days and get tangy and effervescent. It's a lot like a savory kombucha. They'll last a few months in the fridge if you don't eat them all within a couple of weeks. I like to toast a slice of bread, give a healthy swipe of mayonnaise, and then layer a couple of tomatoes onto the toast and eat that for breakfast. You can also just drink the brine straight. If you like sauerkraut, you'll adore this. I brine my tomatoes with dill, garlic, bay leaves, and black peppercorns. You can use big tomatoes cut in half or quarters or sneak in some of those little cherry tomatoes. Similarly, you can chop the tomatoes with onions and jalapenos and make a fermented salsa. I have yet to try this, but man oh man, it seems right up my alley. So click on this link to learn about fermented tomatoes. Next, we'll roast the tomatoes. The goal of this method is to create something similar to a sun-dried texture, but significantly better, not chewy, and then store them in some herbed olive oil. I'm using beefsteak tomatoes that have been halved, cored, and de-seeded. To de-seed a tomato, just push your fingers into those little chambers and push out the seeds and all of that surrounding gelatinous liquid and save all of that stuff. I have ideas. Then place your gutted tomato halves onto a couple of baking sheets and brush them with olive oil. For three pounds of tomatoes, I used about half a cup of olive oil. You want a little space between the tomatoes so the moisture can escape. If you pack them together, they'll end up more jammy than roasted. Still wonderful and still usable, but not what we're going for here. Roast them for at least three hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. Let them cool, ideally in the oven without opening the door, even after you've turned off the oven. Just let them sit in that heat for as long as possible. And now we store them. I wanna use these on charcuterie boards and as snacks with olives and spreads and such. So I want small batches in small jars. I put in a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme and oregano, a couple of small cloves of garlic, and about four tomatoes. You can see how flat they are now. They aren't stiff, but they also aren't falling apart. Once it's all tucked into the jar, I'll cover it with a good grassy olive oil, like not the kind that you cook with, and shake out the air pockets. The oil also acts as a preserve to inhibit bacterial growth. A few of my jars I'll freeze, even in the olive oil, but for those I think I'll eat soon, I'll keep them in the far back of the fridge. You may be wondering how to use roasted tomatoes or what to cook them with. If you aren't going to eat them directly, you can chop them into anything you would use regular tomatoes for, like eggs or pasta or salads or sandwiches. Just drain them of their olive oil and keep that oil because it should be pretty flavorful. Roasting tomatoes intensifies their flavor, so you can blend them into soups or stews, too. For the third way to store tomatoes for winter, we'll make a tomato puree. These tomatoes are different from your usual heirloom or beefsteak. I forget their name, but they're long like Roma tomatoes, and they're the best variety for making sauces. These also need to be de-seeded, and their chambers are long and thin, so it should be easier to de-seed these than regular beefsteaks. We'll add these to a saucepan over medium heat. This is just over a pound of tomatoes, by the way. I won't add salt or water or aromatics because I want a neutral puree that I can use for anything. Cover the pot and let them cook for just about five minutes. They'll release their own water and the skins should start to loosen. Cooking tomatoes makes it easier to remove the skin, which is the main reason we're cooking them. Now for the elbow grease. Drain them of their water by pouring them into a strainer lined with a cheesecloth. You can squeeze it out, or if you have the time, just let gravity do its thing for a couple of hours and save this water. We'll talk about how to use tomato water later. Now we need to remove the skins. You can dig through all the tomato paste 
and pull them out individually. If you have a food mill, God bless you, this will be easy. I have a sieve and a large pestle, so I'll push the paste through, leaving the skins behind. You can also push this through a fine mesh strainer for a similar effect. Again, the goal is to remove the skins. I'm freezing my puree for some meat sauces this winter. For the pound of tomatoes that I processed, I got about three quarters of a cup of puree that's pretty thick because I was also pretty diligent in removing the water. If you don't remove as much water, basically you get a tomato sauce versus a puree. There is a similar method that doesn't use heat. I have an Italian cookbook that calls for passata, and when I look up passata, the internet says it's very similar to tomato puree, which you just saw. The difference being tomato puree uses heat, where passata is a method that keeps the tomatoes raw. I also couldn't find directions on how to do this, so I ran my tomatoes down the large holes of my box grater to pulverize the meat and separate it from the skin. It's not an exact method, a little bit of meat still gets left on the skin, but the raw tomato flavor is discernible in the final product. And depending on how you're using it, that may be important, like it'd be really great on pizzas. We still have to squeeze out the water so we get a thick puree. This was more difficult with the raw product because the water was still part of the meat. And then we have to remove the seeds. I'm showcasing this method of stirring my hand around the fine mesh strainer because it's the simplest and most likely it's what most of you will already have at home. You can use a spoon or a spatula. I did it first, I just got tired of holding it after a while. This raw tomato juice, by the way, can be used for cocktails or just drink it straight. It's quite refreshing. I also used a little over a pound of tomatoes for this method, and it got me like maybe 10% less puree than the cooked version. And into the freezer it goes. The fourth version is a basic one. If you just don't know what to do with them or want to deal with it during the winter, just core them and throw them straight into the freezer. You still need to deseed them and remove the skin. Both of those affect the flavor during cooking, like seeds will turn it all bitter. I have a video on this method already because it's what I usually use to make tomato soup in the winter time. Because I do want that a little more watery, I don't really have to worry about removing water from the meat. So with nearly all of these methods, you end up with tomato water, which is another interesting ingredient on its own. Now, I'm using mine to cook risotto and orzo like a tomato risotto, which is yet another video that I have. If you're into cocktails, tomato water is apparently great for a dirty martini. You can also use it for a salad dressing or a gazpacho or a vegetable broth. So don't pour that down the drain. There's plenty of reasons to keep that. That's all I've got for how to put away tomatoes for the winter. Get the instructions below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash tomatoes. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.